Acidonia 158 and today I'm going to do a video response to Norbrook's Friday Force Man Technology You Miss and the first one where I'm going to pick a game related one to start with is game cartridges and I mean by actual game cartridges I mean I mean technically game cartridges still do exist because the 3DS and the Vita still use cartridges as well as such they're more like cards now but they work the same way here's the thing though they are different than what the older ones because you still you still need to like download patches and stuff or updates for them and stuff. Such a thing doesn't exist on machines prior to the 3DS. I mean, with a DS game, you got the entire game on on the cartridge. So there's no patches or anything. Yes, some games had stuff you could download through the internet on them, but all that was already built into the game. You were just like unlocking it. Unfortunately, this also means if you want to use that stuff now, you've got to use a game genie to do it because there's no because game spy servers no longer exist that the Wii and DS use, so it's the only way to access that that data now in, in the games, which is a shame. But at least there's a way around it, and it's not lost forever. But yeah, I miss real cartridges. I mean, the big, massive ones you can't lose and. Games seem to run a lot better when they're on cartridges than they do on CD and have a lot less buggy and glitchy as well. Yeah, I'm sure there was a few rare occasions of glitchy cartridges, but... That then, people actually attempted to get the games in working order and release, not like now where it's just, we'll throw like a 20 gig patch into the thing. Because, you know, we've got a massive Blu-ray, we can't fill it all on the disc. Because we've got that, really, let's waste everyone's hard drives up with, with patches just so you can even play the thing. Yeah, it's pretty annoying. <laughs> right, so, number two. Teletext. Now, I'm sure most people are watching this not Teletext is, but if you don't, Teletext almost in a way like a pre-internet. Started around in the 80s. I remember it was quite a big thing when we got TV and teletext. But yeah, it's like a pre-internet thing in a way. It's, like, but it's very simplistic looking. It's just like a black screen with some coloured letters. Yeah, it's very simplistic looking. You, just, you, know, you want to know about this news place, type in page 123 and then 123 and then it load the page up. Yeah. It was pretty simplistic stuff. And there wasn't much graphics or anything. Well, and there was graphics with very primitive pixel art like things, and that's to me what the charm was, is how it looks like. This strange looking pixelated spectrum like thing, and I don't know what it what they're running on. Even even on YouTube once actually found an actual entire TV show. I was animating entirely how they did the teletext like screen does. Very weird. Also added weird this fact that that thing was about blind. It was a sign language show. Yeah, it's supposed to teach kids sign language, but it was so strange looking because they made it like a, an old teletext page animated. Yeah, strange. Right, so number three is video cassettes. Now it's not just the video cassettes that you have most memories and miss of. It's is that when I was younger, we used to share game consoles with my brothers, my, well, brother, then. So he'd be on the console, and some days I'd just, I'd just be downstairs taping, recording stuff off the TV onto the videotapes. It's a thing though, I wasn't recording the shows most of the time on the TV. I was recording the adverts <laughs> and, and the ad break bumpers and stuff. I don't know, I just really got into recording them and it was very difficult to get hold of because you didn't know what adverts were going to come in every breaks, so it was different every time, so you'd be constantly flicking channels just waiting for an advert break to see if you wanted one advert which would be like, like 30 seconds long to begin with. It was kind of difficult to get the right thing at times, if you know what I mean. But yeah, I mean that sometimes spent weeks upon weeks, I mean, hours per day trying to just find these certain music videos on channels like The Box, 
which is still around, but you know, the box years ago was like a different thing than it is now. Where you actually t you actually type you telephoned them up, paid paid money, and they play a song. So they have a big list of likes, a song catalog, and you just type number, and then they play that video. And some songs took years to get played on the thing. <laughs> Actually, some songs I remember I had never even showed up on a thing. I remember they had Rolf Harry's two little boys on there on, in the listings. Since about, what, like 2000? I've seen a single one person ever pick that song every time I turned that channel in. It was kind of hilarious. I'm sure it was just in there as a joke. <laughs> yeah, but waiting hours. Of course, none of this is really such a problem anymore. With the music videos anyway, because you just type the name of the band and the artist in and bang, it's probably on YouTube, so yeah, <laughs> and probably in much better quality as well, and not all this nonsense wording that people picking other songs like you'd have on a channel like Box or something. Well, anyway, so after that, but that's another thing. Recording out of slow and adverts now is a lot harder now, it's a lot easier on a videotape now than it is now, because yeah, now we've got better recording software, but think about it. It just records the adverts. You can't separate. You can't separate the adverts from the shows when you're on, on your, like, your your TiVo box and all that. Yeah, you can watch the advert on its own, but you can't keep the advert on on the thing unless you've got some extra storage device and all that. But that way, videos technically better if you was trying to get certain TV commercials. Of course, quite a lot of TV commercials made these days actually end up by the actual person who created them on the internet, so... Yep, so there's that as well. And the last one, now this is going to be one that I'm not sure if most people remember it, but... TV video games. Now what I mean by this is, I mean, one's on, 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 on TV networks like Sky. I mean, you had, you always have, they're always constantly advertising adverts, one of the years I've been, Dog, dog, will you press the red button? And the red button would make a big menu show up, and loads of, like, you've watched multiple football matches or something at one time, or, or play a game while, while the TV channel would be still in the top corner with the sound. And a lot of these games have been very pretty. <laughs> a lot of these games these days would be re are really crap, but. I had quite some fun playing them back then because there wasn't much else. To, because when you went into playing a when you look sharing a game console and everything else is on charge, you got to do something with your time and they're not on TV, so just play a game. Well, what ones did I remember from them? They definitely one that most people definitely remember is Beehive Bedlam, which were always a free one on Sky, and that was yeah. It was better just puzzle bob or buster moves. It was a complete rip off of the puzzle mode of that, just a bit slower. You can find vid footage of this on YouTube because this is one of the most well known ones. That's a pretty short game. I think it only had like 25 levels, and I think I, I did actually remember beating it once. Not like it was an amazing ending or anything. It just like ends. <laughs> well, a lot of these games you like got like like first like level three or a minute, then it go give you. Please give our telephone, give your telephone number. This call will cost you 75p or something like that, and then charge you. Then you can play it as long as you want until you turn the channel over. Though well, most of these, I never did this myself, but I remember a lot of these games was not that good to be honest. Not really worth the money. Well, not that good when you think about it. They were basically what you'd consider very basic, simple flash games, and the technology really wasn't very high, but. Well, they tried anything on this. I mean, fighting games and everything. I mean, Sky even once had Space Invaders on there. And most the same one, if they had Bubble Bobble on Sky once. It cost money to play, but that's so why I never played it. But yeah, Bubble Bobble was on, on a Skybox once. Now, here's the thing I've, I've checked online and looked, ports, looked at this and. No one else apart from me seems to remember that Bubble Bobble was on an, was on Sky Cable Box. Well, it was. But yeah, the first time I actually found it, it wasn't Sky because before we had Sky, we had we had cable and wireless. You, the very old cable company, I think, eventually renamed themselves NTL. But yeah, they had their own games, and the difference with them and Sky was that Sky were a bit more stingy with the one stingy with free ones. Cable and wireless had more free ones. 
And some of them was kind of stupid. It's like there was that one that were well, not quite good at that. Were a fish managing, fish tank managing game. Probably a really simple game, really. But I actually got every single type of fish in the game. <laughs> These actually had little, like worldwide leaderboards and stuff. Well, obviously country leaderboards in this case. We don't think anyone else in the world will play them, but <laughs> any of the ones that are like rock paper scissors, like fighting, yeah, were kind of an interesting one. Of course, it was rock paper scissors, so winning and losing were kind of luck based. So that kind of ruined that one a bit. Then the ones that I just found absolutely hilarious in there. <laughs> it's just. The Noughts and Crosses one, I forgot inter the little intergalactic Noughts and Crosses, and the reason why it's hilarious was is, there was no AI in the game. Basically you're supposed to be saving a world with a game of Noughts and Crosses. But, the, the AI would just throw, throw, the ob throw them down at any random place, it sometimes just make itself lose on purpose, but other times it just get lucky and beat you. There was no like, fault into it. Loading times are kind of long on these as well, I remember right? It's about a few minutes to load up and you're not really to look at when you see it loading it. You can definitely find videos of them on YouTube and stuff. So, it's not just me who remembers them, there's other people who remember these things. They might still exist, but... At the same time, it was pretty basic, there was much more advanced Flash games out even at the time when these were new, so yeah, it was pretty primitive stuff. <laughs> but, yeah, definitely B.I. Bedlam was one of the most well-known and more playable ones. Anyone else I can remember? Um, what other ones were there? Trying to think. Um, no, I remember one channel that always seems to have lots of them was Cartoon Network. I mean, they had lots of them and they used to reskin them over and over again with just different show characters. I mean, I remember the Ben 10 one where it was Ben 10 tennis and he was running, running, running forwards and he had to jump over all these platforms. Then, then some, then some levels it would go the opposite way around so you're chasing someone instead. <laughs> no, you know, sometimes this one costs actual telephone money. It costs a phone bill to constantly play it, but sometimes it didn't. Then there were one that were not like a, it almost like a Metroid-like game, kind of. About Scooby Doo, or sometimes it's like reskin just code kid code names kid next door, where you have to avoid stuff and just like, yeah, the, the controls are pretty bad. And we figured out that one it was is is when you played it, it didn't tech up, it didn't like play. Lots of, lots of these games had took the entire screen up, so you couldn't like watch TV when you're playing it, or or shoot the TV in the box with no sound effect. This one. It didn't do that, it just like, it blew the entire game screen up on top of the t regular TV broadcast, so you basically had all the sprites of this game on top of the regular TV program, which, which looked pretty strange, <laughs> because you're like, kind of watching TV all but playing a game is superimposed on the top of it. Yeah, that's kind of odd <laughs> when you think about it. What other ones are there? Is there any other ones I can think of? Um. Yeah, Cow Network usually was one of the best for them, that's for sure. And what in the head and I just can't think of it. What is it? Urgh! What is it? Urgh! I don't think what it is! Urgh! Oh yeah, some of them had sound effects, but some of them didn't as well, which was a bit awkward. And I remember one of, one of the bigger companies was a company called Playjab. You know, yeah, they, 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 they had an entire like network of just nothing but games on there that they were constantly changing every week. And you even had like, a subscription service, like you pay a week monthly, I think, so you could play each game as long as you want, or you could just pay like 75p until you turn it off. Yeah, they had a lot of weird ones, like, they had a fighting game based off Celebrity Deathmatch, which was absolutely terrible, I mean, it was even worse than the console Celebrity Deathmatch game, and it had a whopping, I think, two characters, so, yeah, wow. <laughs> and, bizarrely, no blood or gore, which kind of 
destroys the point of it because then you see so many death lights, and that's kind of the point of it! <laughs> and I remember the dab lights one of them, and it was the darts one. They had a darts game on there. I think it was, that was one that was usually always free, but then suddenly they start charging money for it, so they complain not. Uh, anyway, I've rambled on enough of this nonsense, so thank you for watching.